Hello, everybody. Today is uh, December 27th, and you're watching my Community Manager Hangout. Uh, we're Pound CMGR Hangout over on Twitter, so you can join us there. And um, today, we're just sort of hanging out and recapping the year. Um, we have no guests today. We just uh, have an open invite for anyone to join us. And, um, you know, as, as Sherry said, you can grab some hot chocolate pull up a seat and take a break from the holiday craze to just come hang out with us. Um, and uh, I'm just going to do some just do some reflecting. So um, if you could just all introduce yourselves, uh, starting with Carrie. All right. I'm trying to put my um, thing on the bottom, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> um, so I'm Carrie Jones. Um, I was formerly at Chegg. I'm now at Scribd. That's S-C-R-I-B-D. And... Um, so now I'm the head of community there, heading up um, some awesome like book clubs and uh, just community book reading activities and activities for authors, things like that. So um, in addition to that, I do some uh, community strategy consulting. Um, so I'm just here to just relax with you guys. I got my coffee and, <laughs> and uh, ring in the new year. Awesome. How about you, Sherry? Sorry, I had to mute myself. <laughs> I am Sherry Brody. I run my community manager here with Brew, um, as well as community strategy and e-commerce at Rebellion Media. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we have two carries to keep awesome. life confusing. Carrie, <laughs> so this will be fun. Carrie Keenan joined us as well. Carrie, why don't you uh, say hi and introduce yourself? Hey, um, I'm Carrie Keenan. I don't know how far you guys are into this, but I also work with Brew at BTC. Um, and community management and some account management. Awesome. And uh, my name is Brew at uh, BTC Revolutions and my community manager here with Sherry. I apologize if I'm not as upbeat as normal. Um, I've had the flu for a few days, so um, my body's a little beat up and uh, I'm a little tired today. So um, kind of kick things off here. Our first question for the group is... What was your favorite community management moment in 2013? Who would like to go first? What's the, what's the thing that just pops out right, right at the top of your head when you think your favorite? Um, I can start. Um, I have to say that I actually just discovered um, my community manager this year, and I just discovered the unconference. And I think that was the first community-specific conference I'd ever been to. Um, so I just thought that was super cool to like come together and um, we could all bring up our own topics. And it was just the first time I really felt like I was part of like a group of like-minded people. Um, so I think that that kind of started something really awesome for me personally. And I'm sure like all of you guys have been hard at work on it all year as well. So awesome. And for me, at the risk of sounding too much of a, of a team geek, um, for me it was honestly starting with BTC. Um, up till starting here, I the, the community I worked with was very small and very slow. And now I'm sort of, it's, I went from zero to 60 and I love it. Like it's, it's crazy, but it's awesome. Like just the difference in a community that's, Inactive versus a community that's very active. It's it's crazy. I love it. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. Um, some more carry as far as you know the community being active or unactive. Well, previously the community I had, um, they they tried to get to create a community out of customers that don't want to talk to one another or involve themselves in anything socially. So there was a lot of just kind of throwing out breadcrumbs and not getting any action, going out to events and not getting anybody to talk to me. And it was just really hard to kind of get it off the ground with that with that audience and that, that particular community. But now it's people are just clamoring to talk to one another. They want to do your activities. They want to contribute. They want to... They want to learn more stuff about you. They want to talk to one another. They want to be friends with one another. It's just it's just so different. How about you, Sherry? You got any <coughs> memorable favorite community management moments? 
I think Sherry is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. For me, um, hmm. You know, I think for me, actually, uh, one of my favorite moments was really actually more campaign-driven. Um, but, uh, you know, um, we, we, we at BTC work with uh, the, um, Applebee's International, um, and uh, we recently did a campaign where we launched... Um, we, took a, we, we took a world champion flair bartender, um, put him behind an Applebee's bar, uh, live streamed and um, asked over Twitter uh, what people wanted him to do, and literally like anything. And um, the craziest thing happened was uh, Tim McDonald actually tweeted <laughs> um, about like, "Hey, uh, could could you do? Or does the spirited chef like ponies, like My Little Ponies, right? Um, just co kind of as a joke and to see what would happen." And uh, so we ended up doing a piece in the video with these two My Little Ponies, um, and this huge community came out of nowhere, uh, these bronies, um, who, who, are, who are basically dudes who like My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and, uh, and I mean literally by the thousands, um, and came to support, watch the videos, share it, uh, we were on a couple different blog posts, somebody made us artwork. Um, and so Applebee's now has an official My Little Pony character, um, <laughs> and uh, and 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 you know, and then and then we we also saw that meetups were happening, um, and people were actually having meetups celebrating the fact that you know Applebee's uh, was really nice to the Bronies. Um, so so <laughs> that's a very strange uh, moment. Maybe I should have saved that to for the craziest thing that happened. <laughs> um, but that's that's probably for me one of my one of my favorite moments. Sherry, are you still frozen? It looks like it. Yeah, I love oh. discovering that there's all these like niche <laughs> communities out there. Um, at Scribd, we discovered there was a community for um, people who are into dinosaur erotica, <laughs> which like you know I maybe don't need to know that, but I'm you know it's just amazing how people come together over these like really specific like passions, <laughs> you know. So I, I love discovering things like that. Yeah, definitely, and and I think and I think from a brand standpoint, um, you know, it's really cool when you can when you can sort of start entering those niche communities um, totally. and become one of them. Dinosaur erotica. I gotta totally add that to my list. <laughs> you can find it on Scribd. It's part of our subscription service now. Under where I think we're gonna make an adult section where kids cannot possibly get into it. <laughs> um, I'm but yeah, lots of indie dinosaur. authors. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is um, struggles. And hey, I just want to let everybody know who's over on Twitter. Uh, watching live, uh, feel free to jump in, guys. Um, if you need the link, just tweet me, um, and I can give you the link to uh, join us live. But come on in, hang out with us, and uh, and talk about um, kind of this 2013 recap. So, uh, question number two is: What was the biggest community manager struggle in 2013, or what was your biggest? <laughs> I think for me it goes back to having a, a community that doesn't want to or care to uh, discuss amongst themselves anything. To have people just not, I mean, granted, my, mainly my community was social oriented. I didn't get to go to too many offline events, but when the only thing people contact you about is because your product doesn't work or... <laughs> or they just want to complain about it and stuff like that. That was always the struggle, was just dealing with just massive amounts of negativity and or silence. And, you know, that kind of, oh, this is a bummer to go to work today kind of situation. Yeah, I think for me the biggest struggles are, you know, kind of those, those PR meltdowns um, where you have to be behind the screen and deal with that and read it and sort of take in all that hate um, and uh, 
you know, that's that's definitely, you know, it, it it's tough. It's tough when those waves of negativity happen. What about you, Sherry? Right, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. No, it's all good. Uh, well, you know, if you if we want, we can reverse, and you could give us your favorite community manager moment. Yeah, sure. Um, I was trying to tell you guys before, but I guess you couldn't see me. I could see you. <laughs> um, I think 2013 was a big year for me to actually meet other community managers that I've been communicating with um, online and everything. Can you hear me okay over the noise in here? That is okay, cool. Um, and so that was huge, like getting to meet Brew and Tim and Brandy and Laura and um, Carrie. I haven't met Carrie Keenan yet, but I feel like I have. <laughs> Um, so getting just to travel all over and meet all my friends is awesome. And then there's just been moments where um, where we've had people say like that this that these hangouts have really helped them, um, and other moments like that where I feel like what I'm doing matters, um, and that's huge for me. So to know that um, that the hangout makes a difference or that something else that I'm involved in makes a difference for someone in my community, that's huge. Um, I usually go in and favorite those moments <laughs> on Twitter because <laughs> that's a lot of times where I find them. Um, but then in addition to that, uh, I guess you were talking about struggles as well, right? So the hardest thing for me this year um, was having to move on um, from one community to another. And it was something out of everyone's control, and no one wanted it to happen. But that that was huge. Like when you're that connected to your community and your team, it's like it's like leaving your family. It's like a breakup. It's actually worse than a breakup in my experience. <laughs> but um, so that was probably my biggest struggle. Actually, that was undoubtedly. Sherry, 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 do you find yourself ever going back and peeking in at the community? Um, no one really has the time to attend to it the way I did um, because I wasn't replaced. The position was just cut. So it's a different type of experience. A lot of them I'm still connected to, though, because there are people that I was connected to um, in the bigger family of the Magento community. So since I'm still involved with Magento and e-commerce, I haven't really lost them as much. Um, it's just a little bit of a different relationship. Interesting. Um, anybody else got any struggles they can think of? Yeah, I mean, I think my biggest struggle was similar to your Sherry. Um, I had a medical issue coupled with horrible burnout this year, like crippling burnout. So um, I think community manager burnout is a topic that people are just now starting to kind of like be more upfront and talk about. Um, it's a huge issue just because we're on 24-7 um, and we really care deeply about the people that, you know, we're bringing together. And sometimes when there's a lot of negativity and you're not, you know, like feeling like you're making a difference and people aren't talking, you just kind of like it's it's hard to get out of bed in the morning, you know. So, um, you know, like that coupled, like I said, with some medical issues I was having, and then I had to let go of the community I was working on before, which was at Chegg. So um, that was really hard. And actually, I. I heard a couple people describe it as a breakup, you know, and they said, like, just don't go back, you know, like, <laughs> don't go check on it. It's not going to be good. But I, I do anyway, and people still, like, you know, will message me and say, how are you doing? Are you feeling better? Stuff like that. And I think that learning the lesson that um, when you build a strong community, it's going to keep going without you, um, that's super powerful and empowering. And and just to know that, like, your work brought people together and even that, like, people miss you. Um, it's a good feeling. Um, it, it makes you feel like what you're doing day to day is worthwhile. So, um, so yeah, that was really hard. Um, but knowing that I can go back and like check on people is is awesome. So, yeah. Other Carrie, did you give a struggle? He did give a struggle. It was the negativity too. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and an empty black hole community of no one talking. <laughs> All right, let's talk crazy. Um, what is the craziest thing to happen in your community in 2013? I don't know if it was the craziest because, as you know, a lot of craziness goes on. But I think the first craziness that I came into myself was maybe a couple weeks in when 
when Apple Games hit 2,000 or 200k followers, and it was just the mass of people. It was sort of my first experience with fan art, and just the mass of amounts of conversation to come in, and the congratulations, and the pictures, and the and just all the greetings, and just the mayhem that ensued, and you know, like, people writing on their foreheads. Yeah, people like. <laughs> You know, when you get in a tweet, a tweet limit and follower limit because you're just trying to say thank you to all these people for encouraging you and helping you along to this way, I was just like, oh, wow, this is this is really insane and awesome and all sorts of madness. And, yeah, the forehead guy was kind of awesome. <laughs> I also like the guy that drew, drew the apple on his chest. That's cool. <laughs> they like the body art. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. My, uh, I think, I think from a crazy standpoint, you know, um, I just think, without getting too too specific, you know, there's a handful of community members that every day come and talk to a brand, um, you know, and every morning say good morning, and good night, and know our reply squad by by heart and everything about them. Um, and uh, ask them, hey, uh, <laughs> wish me luck in my soccer game, um, and things like that. And 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 I think you know, from a from a crazy standpoint, that's that's I think a little bit crazy for me is kind of being in the seat where people people don't know who you are, um, but they're still treating you like a best friend. Trying to uh, think of a crazy moment within the community as opposed to a crazy moment with other community managers. Those two are really hard for me to separate in my head. So I've had so many of the latter. Um, but I mean, when it comes down to it, I've had a lot of crazy moments with community members as well. Um, but the pure fact that we've been at conference. And it looks like we lost Sherry again. <laughs> so, Carrie, you got anything crazy you want to talk about? Um, I don't know about crazy. I mean, I was managing an academic community, so things didn't get too <laughs> zany. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, there was, I think, good crazy. We had um, this guy, one of our community members, actually come into the Chegg office and um, share with us about, he was talking about quantum mechanics and how we could actually realistically time travel and he was explaining that to us like if you were to hitch your like hitch something to like a certain kind of star that was a certain shape and like he explained it and it made perfect sense and um, you know like when you actually see someone in action like in person and, and see their passion um, I think that's a good crazy moment you're like this person's amazing crazy <laughs> but um, I, I mean other than that I mean I'm looking forward to lots of craziness in the new year. Um, I think a lot of like book readers definitely do crazy or more obsessive things. So. Well, and, <laughs> and hopefully you'll have a little crazy with dinosaur erotica. <laughs> I don't know about that. Might <laughs> Spotlights on the blog. Yeah. <laughs> wow, time travel. I'm kind of jealous of that story. That's pretty cool. Sherry, are you back? Well, did you join us again, or are you still having computer problems? Looks like she's still out. All right, so um, let's just hop on along to our next question, which is, what do you want to see happen in your community in 2014? So this is kind of talking about, you know, as we're setting goals here, um, you know, what are what are some of yours? Uh, for your for your community or communities for 2014. I think I'd like to see more of the interactive stuff, um, the, like the video you mentioned before, where where the uh, the community can get involved in what we're presenting them as a brand, 
where they can be involved in like the production mode and and giving ideas and thoughts and you know just having that contribution and being able to a want to be a part of it and b be allowed to be a part of it I think I think that can just be epic for people to know like hey we helped make this really cool thing you should see it too you should do the next one and I think just that level of involvement it just it's really cool Oh, you, Carrie. Yeah, I'd, you I'd like to see a lot more events in my community this year. I definitely want, I'm already starting to put together some ideas. Um, we're hoping to actually create, like, um, our own little in-office book club where we can actually bring awesome authors in um, and sort of, like, empower our internal community as well as bring in, you know, amazing people from San Francisco um, to meet authors that they love. Um, I, I just want to bring some of that community awesomeness in person. Um, so I just look forward to lots of cool book events. I mean, there's so many things you can do with books and stories. So, um, so yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. For me, I think, um, I think what I want to be able to do with my community is keep better track of them, um, you know, and um, figure out how to scale things a little bit better. So that's one of the one of the challenges, you know. As year over year, you, um, you know, your kind of part of your part of your goals are growth, and you know, bringing in more posters, more tweeters, more likes, um, you know, wh wherever wherever your community lies. Um, but but as those numbers grow, uh, it gets to be more and more difficult to scale the conversations, and. Um, and, and, and to scale, like just knowing who everybody is, um, and uh, you know, another another challenge we have that I want to, you know, sort of see fixed for 2014 is just, you know, we we uh, we have about about five people that rotate in and out on shifts um, within the community, and you know, just better ways for them to kind of hand off all that information. So it's really all about you know getting the team to scale. So. Do you know like how you might do that right now? Any tools you might use or anything? Well, um, you know, right now we're we're talking about um, you know possibly building something. Um, you know that's that's really stripped down um, and and uh, works with the native platforms. Um, so that's one of the things that's a little bit uh, interesting for us is that. We don't um, we don't use uh, TweetDeck or Hootsuite or anything else. Um, we use those tools. <coughs> we use those tools, but not for active community management. So we may use them to do some research um, or you know to to do some watching. But we literally are on Twitter.com and you know Facebook.com um, and Instagram and everywhere else. And so. Um, so one of the one of the conversations we've been having is just writing something really simple like a Chrome kind of extension where you know all of our sort of points and users can have a little button by them um, where we can you know like take notes and keep track of them and, and things like that. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, a lot of the things we've looked into um, they they seem to be great at for a community that's a certain size. Um, but uh, but but our some of our communities are just too big, um, and they sort of like implode um, those types of systems. So I think I think you know we, we probably are going to look for something that doesn't automatically sync everything, um, but just lets us one piece at a time start building, um, and uh, we'll just build from the ground up. Sherry, are you uh, back with us? Um, you tell me, because I can always yeah, see you. Yeah, right. we can loud and clear. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to see happen in your community in 2014? Um, so 2014 will be a big year for our community, because right now we're kind of uh, growing in an incubator Facebook group, and our platform will be ready in 2014. Um, so I'll get to really transfer, transfer our little core group that's growing now over there and 
just grow the actual community and be able to uh, do a lot more outreach and bring more people in and just watch them really like, flourish and get to share and get to know each other. So. Great. I think I think your Google Plus just doesn't like it when you start talking. <laughs> and you're spending too much data. I don't know. Um. All right. So, uh, boy, we're yes, yes, Sherry, you froze again. Um, but now you're unfrozen. So <laughs> it's only when you talk that you freeze up. I guess. So I don't know. Um, all right. Well, um, boy, we're just blowing through these questions really fast here. Um, and we're on to our final question, which is, uh, how can you better empower your community in 2014? And I suppose we can talk about, you know, just general empowerment ideas um, as well. So what's, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear empowerment? I definitely think about, you know, the community as being part of some larger mission. Um, maybe this is less true of my work at Scribd and more true of the work I'm doing. I'm consulting right now for an amazing um, ed tech company called Socratic.org. Um, and their mission is really to create the best place for any student to learn anything for free from the best teachers in the world. Um, so I think when you when I think about empowerment, I think about just creating a mission statement sort of for like, you know, what sort of amazing things can you make people a part of this year um, that they're already interested in doing, they're probably already doing, um, but they can do better, easy, easier, and, um, you know, how can you facilitate that sort of interaction? Cool. Carrie Keenan, how about you? What do you yeah. think of when you think of empowerment? Well, I think... I think it kind of goes along with my what I was just saying about the the last question is literally just however you can make them involved, you know, asking questions, getting opinions, taking those suggestions seriously, you know, how can we improve this or hey, can you help us determine the new flavor or the new name for something or just to get them actively involved because these are going to be your most generally speaking, your most passionate brain advocates are probably going to be involved with you already and they're going to be able to jump in and help or ask them to share a, a social mission, you know, like, hey, let's let's spread the word about No Kid Hungry or let's help this these guys out or let's do that, just to get them involved in that and, you know, just basically asking, you know, what's next or how can we get you involved? I think they're going to tell you, you know, once they know that you're listening, they're going to speak up, I think, more. Yeah, one of the things uh, one of the things I'd like to see happen is, you know, really, really building um, some form of an advocate program um, where you know where we're where we're getting fans, um, sort of like a. Uh, uh, almost like a view before things happen um, and kind of ask for their help. You know, one of the things that I've seen that works really well in other communities uh, that, that I'm a part of is, you know, you, you get on an email list and it says, hey, Brew, um, you know, this tweet a coming up. Uh, we'd love your help supporting it. Here are some example tweets uh, for you to help support it. Here is a sample blog post that you can word uh, for your own. You know, and and really just providing them kind of those tools, um, and I think and I think you know we could probably do a lot more of that uh, for 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 the fans um, to allow them to help us campaign by campaign in, in kind of you know really raising awareness of what's going on or what different initiatives uh, we have going on. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but I don't know if you guys use Feedly, um, but they have their own like product feedback community like that, where they're releasing like a bless you, <laughs> a beta version of um, of the new Feedly app, I suppose, um, just to like people that choose to opt in, and they can join their own Google Plus group and give feedback on it, and that way, you're really like opening up a whole channel for them to communicate like what they love, what they hate about it. Um, you know, things like that, I think that's really empowering. I think 
Uh, also, Mailchimp did the same thing last year, where they released it just released a new version just to people who wanted to try it out, and then they made the channel super clear, like where they could give feedback and things like that. Um, and then I don't know if you guys have been reading the Groove blog. It's like a new like Zendesk alternative. Um, but the guy who's writing the blog is the founder, and um, he's been sharing tips for, you know, how to, like you said, give people like blog posts they can write or give people early access, um, give people pre like tweets that they can like send out to others. Um, it's just it's actually like I think one of the best series of blog posts. I've like ever read <laughs> on how to build like and an influencer called list. Again? It's called Groove. Um, right. Yeah, and they're like like I said, like a Zendesk um, like customer service alternative. But the blog is just all about um, actually how to build a following, how to build a community of customers, um, and it's just complete transparency of how they're doing that. It's a really cool blog. They're doing a great job. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you know, another another um, another um, kind of site that I have recently discovered, uh, thanks to Shiri, is Lighthouse.io. Mm -hmm. um, so, ha are you familiar with that, Carrie? Yeah, I think it just started um, like a month or so ago. Um, I was curious who started it. I think his name's David, um, and it's here in San Francisco. Um, and I think it's it's growing now. But yeah, it's all the best like community posts, and they're not necessarily community specific. Oh, Derek is his name. Thanks, Sherry. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a cool idea. It's like the hacker news for community managers, um, and hopefully it will not be as negative as hacker news, which <laughs> most people here called hater, call hater news because it's so <laughs> immensely negative. Um, let's not make it like that. How about that? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but no, definitely, guys, check it out because it's really one of the things... I haven't seen anything like it for um, for community managers, and I know I've been uh, trying to make my way over there each morning uh, just to see if there's new articles. And then the uh, the Groove that you were talking about is actually it's www.groovehq.com uh, for you guys uh, watching, um, so you can check that out. Thanks for that, Sherry. All right, so we're out of questions now. What? <laughs> What do you guys want to talk about? Hmm. Yeah, Sherry is unable to talk. Well, if Sherry just chats, we can just read it out for her <laughs> and just, you know, share it that way. <laughs> so how about you guys over on Twitter? Um, you guys are watching us. Do um, you have any questions? Anyone want to pop in? I have a question for you guys. Um, what's been your favorite um, community manager hangout this year? <laughs> or is that a huge question? Let's see. For me... I think the 12-hour one was amazing. Like, for CMA last year, that was... Like, I just, I just had it on all day long while I was at work and, like, <laughs> Played it on my phone as I was driving home. Like it's just fascinating just to have you know this conversation that just went all day long. Yeah, no, that that was definitely. I mean, that was a great day. In fact, um, you know, the uh, probably out of that day, the the coolest one was, um, and I don't remember the the topic, but it was kind of like community managers from around the world, um, and we had people literally from all over the world all in a hangout, and I remember just sitting there like hovering over people's names and everything and looking at my notes and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm literally talking with so many amazing people and they're coming from all parts of the world right now. Um, I think the, uh, you know, some, of, some of the other hangouts that I've really enjoyed are ones just like this um, where we don't have a guest um, and we fill the room and we just talk about stuff. And I think, you know, Sherry and I um, have been discussing, we want to do a lot more of that um, in 2014, um, where, uh, where it's, 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 it's about a bunch of us coming together and discussing a topic. Um, because those have definitely been um, some of my favorite uh, throughout the year. 
Steve Sherry also said, what about good stories? Anybody have any good stories to share? Um, yeah, I actually, I have, an, I have an interesting story that actually yeah. might help people who are like looking for jobs and things. Um, I actually, I think part of the reason why I'm now head of community at Scribd is because of these hangouts. Um, because I was in one that was about hiring a community manager um, with Tim and um, a couple of other people. Um, and I had just cut my hair like this because it used to be like blonde and really like, I don't know. <laughs> and so um, I was talking about, like, we were hiring a community manager at Chegg underneath me. And then um, a couple months later, I was looking for a job. And then I was walking by the Scribd office, and their VP of marketing is outside. I didn't know this at the time. And she stops me. And she was like, are you Carrie Melissa Jones? <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, um, yes. And she was like, I saw you on, on Google. I saw you. I saw your video. I was, I, we're looking to hire a community manager right now. Um, and and I, I noticed your hair. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I actually got stopped on the street um, because of these hangouts. So um, that was super cool. Made me feel like a celebrity. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so see people... everybody who didn't make it. You could, be <laughs> you could be missing out on people stopping you in the street. <laughs> so um, Josh, uh, Josh had um, you know um, said on Twitter uh, for sure. My favorite was the last minute hungover um, CMGR hangout inside Ali Greer's apartment, um, and uh, so that that was actually on our trip out to San Francisco for the unconference, and uh, we had we had a bunch of community managers together. Um, Probably killed a couple bottles of vodka, um, <laughs> and uh, um, and the next morning just like you know felt like a wreck, and uh, and I had to make it to Allie's apartment um, to do the hangout um, because uh, I think her and Josh were there and we were all gonna kind of like be together like doing the hangout, and uh, the cab was taking forever. Uh, to get to get there, and as I'm looking at my my phone, uh, counting down the minutes, I actually had to call Allie and have her log in as me, um, and 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 you know have it ready to almost start the hangout. And I literally like bust through her door at just the right time, press the start live, and made it through somehow the entire hour. Um, and uh, that was definitely a memorable moment. Also, Jason uh, Schimmel um, has a follow-up question for us. What advice would you give would-be or aspiring community managers? You guys got any advice for Jason? I think you... Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All the carries talk at once. Yay! <laughs> I think being active and being out there and being part of the communities that you're you're in is a great way to start. You know, if you if you already know kind of what's going on and what you want to talk about and kind of you you kind of get the the unspoken rules of communities. I think that that's a huge leg up. You know, and I I mean I always tell people to watch community manager hangout. <laughs> Sounds goofy because I'm on it right now, but like that's the first thing I do is like, oh, Friday afternoon, you gotta watch this thing, you gotta join this Twitter chat, and you learn so much. Yeah, well, and I think you know, just being in a community of community managers, you also um, get some validation on on things, right? I mean, let's let's face it, uh, our job is not always easy, and sometimes it's you know, you can get down on yourself and you think like, oh man. You know, I'm just, I'm, you know, this just isn't working out, or I'm not doing my job well. And then you hear from other community managers um, that they've had similar problems, or they've also had to deal with trolls, or whatever, whatever the topics are. Um, you know, I think, I think my advice is similar, Carrie, which is just like live, breathe, and eat community management. And and if you're not a community manager yet, there's plenty of communities you can get involved with um, and be a volunteer in. Um, uh, both this community, Jason, um, and uh, we're always looking for um, more volunteers to help out uh, as we grow, uh, as well as you know, 
really just belonging to any community um, that's out there uh, for any of the interests you might have, um, things like that. There's great books. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what 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 book. Um, I'm not a huge book reader. Sorry, Carrie. Um, <laughs> but do you do you know any uh, good community manager books? Yeah. Um, there's three that like really stand out to me. Um, the first is obviously if you've never been a community manager before, I would read Buzzing Communities. Um, just because it's a great overview. Um, it's very data oriented, so you know that's helpful in terms of just orienting yourself um, towards which metrics you should be looking at. Um, Tribes by um, Seth Godin. I would definitely read that if you're interested in building communities and um, you know being a leader yourself. And um, think like a rock star by Matt Collier. Um, actually, Tim randomly sent me the Kindle version one day just because I tweeted out that I wanted to read it. Um, and um, that book was hugely influential to me in terms of like building brand advocates and, and really deciding like how to um, empower your community, um, things like that. I would say in general also um, advice I have for any like aspiring community managers um, is just don't be afraid of anything. Um, there's no reason to be afraid of people um, or asking for things. Um, I used to be afraid to tweet at random people, and then I realized community managers especially are super welcoming, and you know, like any day of the week, most people would be happy to have a Google Hangout with you to answer questions you might have. Um, I've gone to coffee with people um, when I was like first really getting into the community manager community. Um, you know, got to drinks with people. I flew to New York earlier, like a couple, about a month ago, and I met a couple of community managers there who I had been like really wanting to meet. Um, so people are just super open. And then in terms of managing your community, don't be afraid to ask them to do things for your brand. I mean, chances are they're already, you know, if they're tweeting about you, things like that, they're loyal fans already. Um, you know, so just don't be afraid to have conversations with them and you know just even if you have no goal in mind just get to know them um, and then in terms of an internal community don't be afraid to ask for what you're worth in terms of um, like your salary and money I've heard a lot of stories about community managers taking like pretty low salaries and that breaks my heart because we work our butts off and um, I think that this position over the next like couple of years is going to gain enormous legitimacy. Um, right now though, like we all need to ask for what we're worth and we're worth like well more than 30k a year. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's just about like you know like knowing what how important what you're doing is and um, you know read those books and understand the data that you need to back up that up. So yeah. Bless you. <laughs> Poor Rue. Poor Rue. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I'm... he's fast on the mute, though. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, maybe Sherry will join us for one closing thought here. I'm gonna check over on Twitter here to see if we have any more questions that came in. Um, doesn't look like it. All right. Well, um, let's see. What else do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I'm like a terrible host today, by the way. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. Um, a in the head. What are some tools you guys have discovered in 2013 that have kind of like changed the game for you, if there are any? Maybe. Muckrack. Yeah. Muckrack. Yeah. Yes. What's that? So muckrack.com. Uh, um, it is a. Uh, so it used to be. Um, what what was it, Carrie? It was um, was that like list Twitter lists something or rather? I, I can't remember what it was. Uh, if you Google for it, you'll find out. Um, but uh, so muckrack.com is a service that has. Basically, they keep track of every journalist and PR professional and, um, or not PR, I guess it'd be more like 
journalists and reporters and things like yeah, that. Pure right? media, like TV, yeah, pure, new radio, like, like all newspaper, the magazines. people, all the BuzzFeed people. Like yeah, so everything from both an online and offline perspective. Uh, but it's all their Twitter accounts, um, wow. and um, so so for free you can't do a whole lot except it is a nice place to go. You can dig through and actually find the Twitter accounts of all those people. Um, that's a free service as well as they have this thing called Who Shared My Link, uh, which is pretty cool. So you could put in any link and it'll just show you um, how many times it was shared on like Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, blah blah blah. Um, the paid version it's a little hefty. Um, uh, for, from a pricing standpoint, but uh, if you're looking to get some um, build relationships with those um, type of people, it's it's a pretty amazing tool. Um, and uh, and the paid version has so many more features. So, and uh, yeah, we've we've used it for a number of things, and that's probably my my big tool for uh, 2013. The one that was like, oh my god, I can't believe I didn't know this existed. How did I live without it before? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else. That's about it. Uh, do you have any? Do you guys have any tools you've discovered in 2013? I I'm just gonna piggyback on your muckrack because that's. I just having used it now, it's just it's awesome. And uh, it looks like Sherry's just she just <laughs> messaged me and said, "Yeah, this is not working out. Sorry, guys." So yeah, no, I I, I definitely um, Muckrack and then Lighthouse Io Lighthouse Io are my two big discoveries for the year. Um, well. I think one of the things I'd like to do is just, uh, since we have a little bit of time, maybe we'll end a little bit early um, so I can go cough a little bit more here. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, would love for all of you joining us uh, here on Twitter um, to also join us at Community Manager Appreciation Day. Um, the, the full schedule is up, uh, so you can go to cmad.co, um, click on Schedule in the upper right, um, and see the entire schedule. So the day is going to be January 27th, um, and we're going to do 24 hours of live hangouts. Um, and I'm just going to read a couple of these because uh, we have some great topics. So we have the strengthening, strengthening community, strengthening community engagement through charitable campaigns, community management on the road, challenges for international communities. Community management for students and academics, online communities and market research, the power of modern community, community case studies from South Africa, that should be interesting, community manager tools live from CMAD FI, external versus internal community management, similarities, contrasts, and chances, organic community growth from scratch, the role of social media in community management, handling disasters, the evolution of enterprise social networks, taking customer support communities to the next level, is being tech savvy the new MBA, building community in the enterprise business, managing luxury communities, evolution of gaming communities, communities around content, the resurgence of owned communities, Sensitive and high-risk communities, leading accessible online communities, delivering beyond expectations, and reflections on Community Manager Appreciation Day. So, um, wow, what a huge day. Um, I, I don't know how I'm going to stay awake for all 24 hours, but it is my goal. Um, and uh, I guess um, we'll see you then. So uh, you won't see me next week, um, but uh, Sherry will be on. And, oh boy, usually Sherry's the one who knows uh, our schedule and <laughs> and tells us all what's going on. So let's see here. Um, Merlin Ward is the guest next week talking about his book, You Get What You Give. 
Um, and so that and, and CMAD were the two announcements. Um, and uh, so we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Same time, same channel. And uh, have a great week, guys. And a Happy New Bye. Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>